according to Steve Nathan, the chief executive of financial services provider 10X, over the past few decades, nothing much has changed in the retirement industry. In fact, things might have gotten worse. He's in our Cape Town studios. I, I read the piece that you uh, were quoted in on uh, Fin24, Steve, and described before uh, in the introduction to this program that you're a bit like Don Quixote. You, you're having a full go at this retirement funding windmill, but it's nothing new. And in fact, you're a lot more powerful than a man with a lance. Um, are you making much progress though? Are people starting to listen? I think they are, Alec. I think that uh, it's a combination of what 10X is saying and also what National Treasury has picked up very heavily in their retirement reform where they've been very critical of the industry practices and they've highlighted almost verbatim exactly the same issues that we at 10X have highlighted. And the bottom line here is that uh, the retirement saver is getting a poor deal in most instances and that poor deal means that they fail to retire with enough money. And there are simple ways for them to improve their outcomes. And that's really the message we're trying to get across. Steve, you're an interesting guy. You were a top rated analyst on the JAC. Um, you could have stayed with the money. You could have, I'm sure you were earning uh, a seven figure salary long before uh, it became the norm for investment analysts. And yet you went in a different direction. Yet you've gone into this very challenging field of yours of trying to educate people, trying to change, trying to disrupt an industry. What motivated you? What, what clicked you there? Well, my interest in finance really stemmed from trying to understand how financial markets worked, how we could allocate capital efficiently so that everyone benefits, so that we create win-wins for providers of capital, for people that, uh, that use capital. Um, but when I entered the investment industry and I actually analyzed these financial services companies, I saw that uh, the practices that, uh, that we were doing really were, weren't in the best interest and they certainly weren't what we learn as investment professionals, which is really allocate capital sens sensibly, have a long-term view, be efficient, minimize fees. And as you say, I mean, I had a wonderful time both uh, in South Africa and globally meeting the top CEOs all around the world, but uh, my conscience really got the better of me and I said, uh, there's a big opportunity to, to give something back Hopefully, we'd like to be successful as a company, but that's really a secondary incentive. And when you have to highlight the issues that are, that are keeping you awake at night, those issues that actually pushed you in this direction, are fees at the top of them? Fees are, it's a, there really is a couple of things. So there's, there's a few ands here. You've got to do simple things well it's not really, I've got to do this or that. You've got to do a few simple things well. And really, we break it down into two main components. The first is you have to be a diligent saver. So we're entering savings month, and we know that South Africans aren't great savers. So we need to stress to people, for retirement, you should be saving 15% from your first paycheck to your last paycheck for 40 years. The second is you have to earn an optimal return on those savings. And that's really where the industry comes in because it's our responsibility to provide you with a low risk path that's likely to deliver high returns. And that really is a combination of where do I invest my money for that long-term period and what fees do I pay? So you've got to get the right portfolio and you've got to get that at the right fee. And if you do those things correctly, save sensibly, invest sensibly, minimize fees, your chance of success is dramatically high. You should actually almost guarantee that you're going to have enough money. And we know that in South Africa, nine out of 10 people fail and they're doing one of two things wrong. They're either not saving appropriately or they're not earning the optimal return on investment. I had this conversation with a niece who's uh, in her mid twenties and she was saying to me, she's worried she's not saving enough. And my res uh, response to her was, you can actually invest in yourself, keep building your own business, keep putting, educating yourself, maybe doing another degree, etc. That's also an investment, not necessarily money that goes into retirement. What's your, your um, reaction to that? Well, without a doubt, I mean, you, you have human capital. So, so early on, uh, there's a lot of human capital and you want to invest in yourself and you want to improve your earnings potential, your earnings power. But uh, as you know, Alec, one of the most important rules of long-term investing is compounding. So you have to start saving early on. The others you should do as well. As I said, these are ands, they're not or. It's not as if I've got to invest in myself or invest in my retirement fund. You just have to do 
both of those and all of those other issues that I mentioned consistently because if you wake up too late, if you start saving not with 40 years to go but with 30 years to go, then the amount you save, that 15%, has got to go up by at least 50%. And that's unaffordable for most people. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a smart thing to start saving early. And as you say, compounding, isn't that the eighth wonder of the world? But we did see in the budget that there was some, con uh, there was some comment about the new retirement uh, playing field. How do you think that it's all going to work out in the next few years? Well, this is a journey that National Treasury is on, and we're really at the very early stages. And from March of next year, we've got the first tangible legislation coming into place. Now, quite simply, what National Treasury has said is that retirement savers are getting a raw deal. And the issues they've raised is that it's a very complex environment. There's too much investment choice out there. Investment choice leads people to seek advice, and sometimes that advice is conflicted, and sometimes advice is very expensive. Investors are using active managers that on average are delivering returns below the index, and they're paying high fees. So Treasury has to, has to address quite a few areas. And the one area they're doing at the moment is the complexity, where they're saying, not of, of investments, but really we have pension funds, provident fund, retirement annuities, and there's a very complex legislation which is completely unnecessary. So they're starting to address that. So I think that uh, hopefully in five years' time, and maybe a bit longer than that, we'll have a very different retirement fund industry that'll be much simpler for people. It'll be much better for them to get improved value for their savings and also be much better for them to understand the difference between product A, B, and C, where at the moment they have no idea what the differences are. And a big drive from Treasury is to have a default, is to say, people, we're gonna show you a low risk path to get you to retirement with high confidence, and that default should have all the sensible investment principles that I spoke about earlier. Mm, so very consistent with the way that you're looking at it. Steve, there are lots of good uh, financial advisors in South Africa. We tend to always, in anything in life, look at those in the margin who may be not that good. You know, uh, the, the make exceptions of, uh, of the bad guys. But how are they changing? How are the financial, how's the financial advisory world changing and supporting ideas like yours? Well, the financial advisors, as you say, have a very important role to play because people don't proactively save for the retirement themselves. So they need to be nudged, they need to be encouraged, and they need to be handheld. And what a financial advisor should do is give you a retirement plan. So a retirement plan to say, you need X amount at retirement in order to meet that future goal, we're gonna have to save a certain amount and we're gonna have to earn a certain amount on those savings. So the financial advisor is there to give you a financial plan, to encourage you to save, to get you to save today and not next year to hold your hand when markets are volatile and you're thinking of changing course. So that's the role that financial advisors should play. As you say, some of them do play that role, but a lot of them aren't playing that role. A lot of them are really looking to maximize their commission. They're looking to put investors in higher products that, that have higher margins for them. And the regulators are looking at that. The regulators are looking at a incentive structure for advisors that truly puts the client interest ahead of the advisor interest, and that would be really by moving away from commission. So you paid a rate, a professional fee for your service as you would pay a tax advisor or a lawyer, rather than depending on how much money you have to invest or the product you invest in. Well, I told you there was good news in today's program. That was Steve Nathan, founder and CEO of 10X Investments.